Hello, I'm James Buscard, president of Nevada Exploration, and today we're going to look at how we're using our results to date at South Grass Valley, plus the latest geoscience to advance four new Carlin-type gold targets we've identified at this district-scale project, located south of Cortez, one of the world's most important and profitable gold districts. As we do so, I will be making some forward-looking statements. Over the next 20 minutes, we're going to cover the anatomy of Nevada's largest Carlin-type gold districts, then look at how we acquire information to look for new districts, how we use that information to build geologic models, how we've combined our model with geochemistry to identify specific targets we believe could represent deposits within the district, and finally, and most importantly, exactly how we're planning to advance each target through the next phase of exploration. As many will know, we acquired South Grass Valley as a result of our groundwater chemistry driven generative exploration program and in 2018 we began advancing the project to look for a large Carlin type gold district such as Cortez located at the north of the valley. We know a lot about Nevada's major Carlin districts. These three districts which contain 80% of Nevada's Carlin type gold endowment or 200 million ounces are remarkably similar in terms of their makeup and size. Their geologic architecture is made up of regional scale structural fabrics cutting through reactive lower plate carbonate host rocks along the margins of large intrusives, which have then been exploited by massive hydrothermal systems, creating alteration in geochemistry footprints affecting tens of cubic kilometers of bedrock. It is the relationship between these features that provides the specific geologic settings that lend themselves to different deposit types with generally higher grades found closer to the intrusives and lower grades seen further away. If we're looking to find this type of mineralization at South Grass Valley, this is the architecture we need to be able to demonstrate and the scale of the hydrothermal system we need to see. Testing for these features was the objective of our first phase of work at the project at what is effectively a blind target where the only bedrock we see exposed is here at Goodwood Butte and here at the south along the edges of the project. By mapping the geology of the exposed bedrock we begin by establishing important information about the sequence and relative position of bedrock units at the project. Here to the south we see a sequence of lower plate bedrock sitting underneath the Roberts Mountain Thrust and upper plate centered around a cluster of granitic intrusive rocks all of which have been subject to major fault thrust and folding features. To the north we see the same lower plate units and structural complexity sticking out of the gravels here at Goodwin Butte. To project these features that we can see under the majority of the project where we can't see the bedrock we've completed two geophysical surveys. The results of an air magnetic survey we flew gave us an initial indication on the extent and shape of the higher magnetic granitic rocks we see to the south and suggested that the lower magnetic carbonate host rocks that we see at Goodwin Butte and to the south continue under much of the project. The other information that the air mag provided were important clues about the dominant structural features we see exposed in outcrop and how they continue under cover. Next we completed a gravity survey to get an idea of the relative depths to bedrock across the project. Orange areas represent places where we expect shallower bedrock and blue areas represent places where we expect deeper bedrock, which highlight places where the depth changes rapidly, potentially representing important structural features. At this scale, the results of the geophysics plus the detailed mapping increased our confidence in the concept that the project contained the right geologic architecture hidden underneath the cover. With this confidence, we began integrating more expensive, direct sampling tools with the goal of confirming and hopefully improving our geologic projections and to test for whether or not this favorable geologic setting is home to a large Carlin-type mineral system. Based on a growing body of research, we know that these systems create large alteration in geochemistry halos or footprints in bedrock that are also reflected in the soil and the surrounding groundwater, defined by gold, thallium, antimony, mercury, and arsenic. Guided by this research, we've completed large sampling programs to test for a suitably large alteration in geochemistry halo, as well as to focus our efforts to where these signatures may point to potential sources of mineralization. 
We've collected more than 2,000 soil samples along 33 sample lines, 424 water samples from 225 purpose-drilled boreholes, and approximately 2,500 drilling samples from 10 orientation diamond core drill holes spread out over more than three and a half kilometers. As you can see, we've acquired a wide distribution of geochemistry data across the project in three different sampling mediums. We're going to begin by reviewing the results of our drilling program. Each of the drill holes provided information that has improved our depth to bedrock model, allowing us to better understand the covered bedrock topography. The dominant rock units we encountered in the drilling were Silurian to Cambrian age lower plate carbonates, which in some cases sit underneath younger mud flow and volcanic units, with the southwesternmost hole encountering granite. Every one of these holes encountered major structural and related damage features, which were refined in a number of the holes with oriented core. By combining the geological and structural data from these drill holes with the detailed mapping and structural measurements from the exposed bedrock, plus the geophysics, we're able to begin to build a preliminary model of the geologic building blocks at the project. Based on the model, we're seeing a complex structural framework extending from the map, thrust, and fold system that has been cut by high angle faulting. We're seeing a thick sequence of reactive lower plate bedrock exposed at the south end of the project underneath the Roberts Mountain thrust that then continues northwards under cover around the margins of a Mesozoic aged grass valley intrusive stock where we're seeing improved rock preparation with hornfells and marble. What we're looking at here is typical of large Carlin systems in terms of its geologic architecture, and it's this architecture that now provides the necessary context to understand the significance of the other major features we're seeing in the drilling. Beginning with alteration, what we've encountered is widespread bleaching, decalcification, argillization, and calcite and barite veining, together with intense silicification, all the way from holes four and five at the south, to holes 9 and 11 at the north. Within the large alteration features, the drilling encountered multi-phase, strata-bound, structurally controlled and breccia-hosted sulfide and oxide mineralization containing sooty, fine-grained secondary pyrite associated with elevated gold, thallium, antimony, mercury, and arsenic. The scale of these features in terms of the volume of bedrock that has been affected confirms that this classic Carlin type geologic model has been exploited by a massive mineralized hydrothermal system with a characteristic budget of gold and associated pathfinders. Having discovered what we consider to be the largest new Carlin type mineral system in Nevada, our job now turns to identifying specific targets defined by geologic settings known to host large deposits in other Carlin districts, in places where there is also evidence for mineralization in the bedrock, soil, and groundwater sampling we've created. Reviewing the results of the soil sampling, the data show two robust clusters of elevated mercury, one at the south end of the project and one to the north. This pattern is also supported with elevated arsenic in both of these areas. Now looking at the results of the groundwater sampling, as we would expect, over the top of an oxidizing Carlin type system, where the gold and pathfinders are contained within the rims of secondary pyrite or iron sulfide, we're seeing elevated concentrations of sulfate, gold, and pathfinders that define three discrete zones of enrichment towards the south, middle, and north of the project. This pattern here, shown in sulfate, is repeated in arsenic in antimony, and most importantly, in gold. This large, multi-medium geochemistry data set is incredibly important as we can now focus on the perspective settings identified in our geologic model where there is direct geochemical evidence for gold mineralization. By integrating the geochemistry with our model, we've identified four discrete targets each of which we believe offers the potential to host a large Carlin-type gold deposit. And it's these targets that we expect will be the focus of our next stages of exploration.
Also, importantly, based on our model, large portions of all of the targets are likely within the depth range of medium-sized reverse circulation drilling, which offers the potential to considerably decrease our drilling costs for these next steps. We're now going to look at each of the four targets, beginning down to the south at the target we call Water Canyon. Water Canyon is located at the intersection of a north-northwest lineament, a northwest fault fabric, and a northeast fault, to the east of historic adit and trench workings. The reason this particular favorable geologic setting was selected as a target is the supporting presence of anomalous carlin-type pathfinders in soils as well as in groundwater. Here we are looking at the elevated mercury in soils immediately above the target, which is also reflected in arsenic. Now looking at groundwater, we're seeing concentrations of gold and pathfinders, in this view arsenic, increasing as the groundwater flows over the target. The concept to be tested at this target is that of typical carlin-type mineralization located in structural trap sites. We also see potential in this area for high-grade mineralization in Hornsfeld lower plate carbonates associated with the intrusive and placed along the southeast plunging folds. To advance the target, we're proposing a five-hole RC drilling program for a total of 2,200 meters to test for evidence of ponding mineralized carlin-type hydrothermal fluids in the low-angle trap sites beneath the upper plate cap rocks, as well as highly anomalous gold and related pathfinders within the Hornsfeld host rock close to the Grass Valley stock. Success for this next stage of work at Water Canyon will be defined by intercepting carlin-type gold mineralization and or significant alteration containing secondary pyrite with highly anomalous pathfinder elements. Moving directly north from Water Canyon, along the margins of the Grass Valley stock, we're now going to look at our second target called Golden Gorge. Golden Gorge is located to the east of the intrusive, where drilling has confirmed the presence of silicified and marbled breccias. In addition to the geologic support provided by the drilling, this highly favorable setting is further supported by the coincident alignment of the highest golden groundwater we see at the project, which closely maps this interface between the lower plate and the intrusive, as well as by the anomalous geochemistry in the drilling samples and the fracture-controlled intervals of gold we see in hole 1. The concept to be tested at Golden Gorge is that of potentially high-grade oxide gold mineralization within the Hornsfeld lower plate up against the intrusive, similar to the setting at Gold Strike, with the potential for additional gold mineralization in the oxidized and intensely altered breccia units encountered at the bottoms of holes 4 and 5. To advance the target, we're proposing a six-hole RC drilling program for a total of 2,600 meters to establish the extent of the Hornsfels oriel on the east flank of the intrusive and to test it for evidence of mineralization, as well as to test the western extension of the altered breccias, which we already know contain highly anomalous pathfinder geochemistry. We consider success for this next stage of work at Golden Gorge to be intercepting Hornsfels containing multi-phase silica breccia and secondary pyrite containing strong evidence for carlin-type mineralization, including highly anomalous gold and pathfinder geochemistry. Heading west from Golden Gorge, towards the upstream edge of the pronounced cluster of elevated gold and pathfinders in groundwater we looked at in the middle of the project, we're now zooming in on our third target we call Waterfall. The target is located along a series of southeast plunging folds at the projected intersection of high angle, district scale northwest and northeast trending faults within the projected extension of the lower plate bedrock encountered in the drill holes to the east as well as seen exposed to the south, which we believe are likely to be in contact or closely associated with the Grass Valley stock. The geochemical support for mineralization at this particular intersection of favorable geology is driven by the evidence based on 3D modeling that the high concentrations of gold and groundwater centered over Golden Gorge include a contributing component that originated from the southwest from the direction of waterfall. In addition to the golden groundwater, there is also geochemistry support in the soil samples across the western part of the target where there is a discrete zone of elevated arsenic. The concept to test at Waterfall is that of fracture-controlled mineralization within Hornsfeld lower plate and placed along the fold axes, similar to that at the latest 4-mile discovery at the north end of the valley. 
To advance the target, we're proposing a seven-hole RC drilling program for a total of 2,500 meters to establish what looks to be the irregular geometry of the interface between the lower plate and the Grass Valley stock and to test this geologic setting for the mineralized bedrock source of the high golden groundwater seen above and downstream of the target. Success for this next stage of work at Waterfall will be defined by encountering direct indications of carlin-type gold mineralization in bedrock that focuses our search to structural, rheological, or stratigraphic controls associated with gold and its related pathfinders. From Waterfall, we're going to head north up to our fourth target, which we call Freddy. Freddy is located to the northeast of Goodwin Butte where our drilling has defined large zones of sulfide-bearing, silicified breccias within silty carbonate units that show evidence of low angle thrust faulting. These lower plate carbonate units sit underneath a shale cap rock at the intersection of high angle north-northwest and northeast district scale faults along an antiformal fold hinge as seen here in outcrop at Goodwin Butte and in the oriented core. Together, these features represent characteristic host rocks and mineral controls for carlin-type mineralization, which are supported by the gold and pathfinder seen in the silicified breccias in our drilling. In addition to the drill samples, there is also strong geochemistry support in soils, where we see the largest northern cluster of elevated mercury and arsenic in soils sitting immediately above the target. When we look at the groundwater results, we see even more support, now in a third sampling medium, with the notable increases in gold, thallium, and arsenic in groundwater as it flows past the target. The concept to now be tested at Freddy is that of oxidized silicified breccia-hosted gold mineralization analogous to the mineralization at Gold Rush. To advance the target, we're proposing a five-hole RC drilling program for a total of 2,200 meters to determine the extent and controls of the silicification and to test the up-plunge extension of the pathfinder-bearing breaches seen in holes 9 and 11 for higher grade mineralization. Success for this next stage of work at Freddy will be intercepting carlin-type mineralization and or major silicification containing gold and related pathfinders. We've now taken a look at our four targets and our planned next stage work programs at each. As we zoom back out to look at the whole project, let's review what we've been able to accomplish with our first 10 relatively deep orientation drill holes. We've defined the classic geologic architecture of a Carlin type gold district with regional scale structural fabrics and multiple structural trap sites within reactive favorably prepared lower plate carbonate host rocks exhibiting significant brecciation along the margin of a major intrusive. Then most importantly within this architecture, the drilling encountered a characteristic hydrothermal system with thick and widespread alteration features associated with elevated gold thallium, antimony, mercury, and arsenic. The resulting model and geochemistry sampling have identified four discrete targets defined by geologic settings analogous to those hosting large deposits in Nevada's known districts and supported by gold and associated pathfinders in multiple sampling mediums. We believe each target individually has the potential to host a large deposit within what has become now a district scale project and with specific objectives and definitions of success driven by the best geoscience, we have a clear focus for our next phase of exploration. As we conclude this video, it's important to put our exploration program at South Grass Valley into context. There are other projects in Nevada that can check many of the same Carlin type boxes. What differentiates South Grass Valley is the scale of the mineral system we found. Our drilling has encountered cubic kilometers of Carlin type alteration, silicification and geochemistry extending over more than three and a half kilometers, all of which remains open. Our soils and groundwater sampling have identified highly anomalous gold and related pathfinders extending for more than eight kilometers. What we're seeing here is the footprint of a mineral system comparable in size to those responsible for Nevada's three major districts. Large districts are the products of large mineral systems, and that is exactly what we've discovered here at South Grass Valley, and we found it in an otherwise completely blind setting. We're leading the industry in the search for the next Carlin-type gold deposits waiting to be discovered undercover in Nevada's large valley basins. Our results at South Grass Valley have validated our undercover workflow, and we invite you to follow our story as we continue to advance this and our other projects. 
Follow our story at www.nevadaexploration.com.